At the core of an electric vehicle's functioning is the electric motor that rotates the wheels. In fact, electrifying a vehicle primarily involves replacing the average IC engine with an electric motor. This makes the electric motor just as important as the battery pack that powers it. Using an electric motor actually minimizes the amount of mechanical parts and movement that goes on inside a vehicle. So when an IC engine creates traction with cylinders, pistons, and a crankshaft, all it takes in EVs is just a signal to the electric motor. But how do electric motors develop the traction needed to turn the wheels of an EV? To answer this, we need to understand what a motor is and how it works. Electric motors are machines that convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. EV manufacturers choose the ideal motor for their models by considering its efficiency, power density, acceleration, torque, and cost. They come in two main types, DC and AC motors. DC motors are powered by direct current and include brushed and brushless DC motors. AC motors are powered by alternating current and include synchronous and asynchronous motors. While the electrical energy is derived from a power source like a battery pack, the resulting mechanical energy is what gives us rotational motion. Behind this rotation is the underlying concept that when you pass a current through a rectangular coil inside a magnetic field, the coil rotates because of the forces acting on it. All magnets have a north and south pole, and while opposite poles attract each other, like poles repel each other. A magnet that naturally displays these properties is called a permanent magnet. But an average iron nail can also be made to display these properties if it is turned into an electromagnet. For instance, if we take an iron nail or rod, wrap a coil around it, and pass electricity through it by connecting a battery to it, it will turn into an electromagnet and display magnetic properties. This means that it will have a north and south pole till it stays connected to a power source. When it disconnects from the power source, it loses the magnetic properties. To understand how this fits into the context of electric motors, here's a look at the workings of a brushed DC motor. It has a cylindrical metal casing with a shaft where the drive wheels of the EV will be attached. Inside this metal casing are two main parts central to its working, a rotor that rotates and a stator that remains stationary. In this case, the rotor is the electromagnet with an armature of windings that have electricity flowing through them, and the stator is the permanent magnet surrounding the motor. There are two permanent magnets with opposite poles facing the electromagnet. By passing current through the coils, a magnetic field is developed. The polarity of the magnet depends on the direction of current flowing through it. When the north pole of the electromagnet aligns with the north pole of the permanent magnet, they repel each other, and the electromagnet moves towards the other permanent magnet with an opposite polarity. But when the north pole of the electromagnet meets the south pole of the permanent magnet, it stops rotating. Now, in order for the electromagnet to rotate again, the poles of the electromagnet and permanent magnet have to be the same. Since we're working with an electromagnet, its poles can be switched by reversing the direction of current flowing through the wires. This process of switching the polarity of electricity to keep the rotor rotating continues for as long as the battery has power to let it do so. But switching the polarity of electricity by flipping the wires each time would be a tedious task, and this is why brushed DC series motors have a commutator and brush. The endings of the coils from the rotor are each connected to a separate commutator, which is responsible for switching the polarity of electricity. Two brushes act as conductors and provide the commutator with electrical energy. So the flow of electricity in the motor would look something like this. DC series motors have a high starting torque, which makes them ideal for use as traction motors. This gives EVs with DC series motors effortless speed control and a tolerance to sudden rise in loads. But as good as they sound, they do come at a cost, that is, a high maintenance cost and low efficiency 
because of mechanical parts like the commutator and brush. As the brush and commutator continuously rub against each other, they wear out, generate sparks, and reduce the service life of the motor. This is why many car manufacturers prefer the brushless DC motor, commonly known as the BLDC motor, over the brushed DC motor. In the BLDC motor, the brush and commutator get replaced by an electronic system, which reduces the number of mechanical parts. This leaves us with just the rotor and stator. BLDC motors have a rotor with permanent magnets on opposite ends and a stator that is an arrangement of coils inside it. When a DC current is given to the coils of the stator, it generates a magnetic field. Here we have three different sets of coils. When coil A gets energized, it generates a magnetic field that gets attracted to the opposite pole of the permanent magnet. But right when the permanent magnet is about to get to coil A, the current to coil A is turned off and coil B is energized. This now makes the opposite pole on the permanent magnet move towards coil B. And just like with coil A, coil B will now get turned off and coil C gets energized. It is this process that repeats itself to keep the motor rotating and turning the wheels of an EV. BLDCs dominate the EV industry with their high efficiency, starting torque, and power density. They are used in the Tesla Model 3. Similar to the power density and efficiency of the BLDC motor is that of the AC permanent magnet synchronous motor. This rotation of the motor is in sync with the frequency of alternating current it receives, making it a synchronous motor. In this motor, the rotor receives a DC input and has a constant magnetic field, while the stator gets a three-phase AC input and has a revolving magnetic field. As opposite poles of the stator and rotor get attracted to each other, the magnetic field of the stator rotates while attracting the rotor. These motors are equipped with a squirrel cage surrounding the rotor to rotate at the frequency of alternating current running through the stator. In these motors, the rotor can either be a permanent magnet or an electromagnet depending on their application. When a permanent magnet is used, this motor can function as an alternator in EVs. This means that it can be a motor that propels the vehicle and also an alternator when it comes to regenerative braking. Permanent magnet synchronous motors come with a high power rating, making them ideal for use in high performance cars. It is because of this that car manufacturers like Chevrolet, Toyota, Nissan, and BMW use these motors in their hybrid and all electric vehicles. While the permanent magnet synchronous motor rotates at the same speed as the frequency of current, the rotor of the induction motor rotates at a speed less than the frequency of current. This makes it an asynchronous motor. The stator receives an AC input and generates a rotating magnetic field, also known as RMF. This RMF makes the rotor, which is surrounded by a squirrel cage, rotate. In a DC motor, the power would be given to the rotor, but in this AC motor, a three-phase AC input is given to the stator. The speed at which the rotor rotates is determined by the frequency of AC fed to the stator. Because of differences in the phases of AC input, the magnetic field will have different orientations. And when these orientations are aligned, a uniformly rotating magnetic field is developed. Since the rotor rotates because of the generated RMF, there is no contact between rotor and stator. This mechanism reduces the friction and wear on the system. In order for three-phase AC induction motors to have high starting torque like the DC motors, they must undergo a series of control methods that alter the frequency. Once these changes have been made, it offers more torque for longer ranges. Tesla uses this model in its Model S and X EVs for the robust and efficient nature. At the end of the day, it all comes down to using the motor that provides maximum efficiency, torque, and propulsion for an EV.